As highly sensitive people, we are gifted with traits of being empathetic, insightful, and creative. Yet accompanied by that, we are both more prone to anxiety and depression. I wanted to dedicate this video to people who are struggling with the same issues because all my life I have been a highly sensitive person and it was even stigmatized against me um, by my family and friends. They often label me as being too sensitive and having too many like crazy ridiculous thoughts. We all have experienced moments of sensitivity. But for highly sensitive people, this kind of sensitivity has been tremendously magnified. Psychologist and researcher Elaine Aaron, who first brought us the concept of a highly sensitive person, uses DUS model to explain people that are highly sensitive, where D stands for depth of processing. As highly sensitive people, we overly analyze everything, we overly process everything. For example, one of your coworkers says something the day before, and then you ruminate on the things he said and then try to suspect the meaning of it for like days, which is often a subconscious behavior. O stands for overstimulation. To be specific, it's like we are having this broad spectrum of over receiving everything. We're just being responsive and being absorbing to social stimulus. And to a point we just get completely exhausted mentally from this excessive amount of information. E stands for emotional responsiveness or empathy. It was proven that highly sensitive people have more mirror neurons in our brain so that we are very empathetic to people around us by mirroring their exact feelings and thoughts and attuning to others wholeheartedly. For example, it's very easy for us to predict what others are saying before they actually say it out. S stands for sensitive to subtleties and sensory stimuli. We are able to catch what others cannot catch in the background. For example, we're super sensitive to noises, to lights, to flashes, or strong smells. For example, whenever I am in the bar, I often find it hard to bear with like so many things going on in the background. So I often become super vigilant and super nervous because I need to notice all those subtleties and I capture all of this information and it kind of just exceeds the amount of information that I can process. Because of the traits above, it could be like double-sided arrow. This is especially true for the creatives. On one hand, we rely on our sensitive sensor to notice subtleties to actually process as much as information as possible. We require this flexibility in thinking and constant rumination to bring us consistent inspiration for valuable output. On the other hand, we suffer from mental exhaustion because we overly process, we overly absorb and react to every subtlety from the surroundings, from the environment. If we're in our creativity mode, Everything is perfect. It's amazing, it's so smooth because we're able to produce like valuable information. But when we're going through this dry period when we don't have anything to output, when we lack inspirations, things can be really difficult for us to manage because we go through mental exhaustion, we go through self-sabotage and also physical fatigue. So the first tip is that inspiration will come to you at the right time. When we're going through a dry period of creativity, we often will become so anxious. We often engage in self-sabotage because we shame ourselves for being useless, for being non-valuable, for being exhausted of all talents already. But the more we are in this anxious state, the more we are in this forced and stagnant state of ego. When we are in ego state, we all know that it's not going to end good because we are in our mind, we are in our thinking, we are not being our free flow of ourself. But when we are in a blissful, when we are in this relaxed and happy, kind of cheerful kind of mood, inspiration will come. Because that's the time when we have dropped the resistance and allow ourselves to be in full expression of authentic self. That's the time inspiration will come and knock at your door. Nobody struggles harder with perfectionism than the creatives do. But I wanted you to understand that perfectionism is driven by shame. Because we feel somehow inadequate ourselves, we feel somehow we're not good enough. That's why we need, we require ourselves to be this perfect being, to create, to output this perfect work. 
to prove to the world we are valuable and useful. As perfectionists, we nitpick and judge the quality of each thread of inspiration because some of them look really dumb at that time and some of them just seem to have such poor quality. But we should learn to accept that the process of creation is full of struggles. We need to really allow the existence of each state, no matter if it's stagnant or free flow. Because who knows, maybe five years ago you planted the seed. And with time, with life experience, it matures and evolves. And five years now, you see it as a quality one. You think it's ready. Like Steve Jobs has said, when we're experiencing things, when we're experiencing struggles, we really don't know the meaning behind it. We ask why. Why us? Why do we have to go through it? But when we're looking backwards, when we're connecting the dots, and everything starts to make sense, I think this illustrates perfectly the process of creation. We really need to go easier on ourselves. This tip has personally helped me very effectively in managing my bipolar too. When I was going through my hypomaniac episode, I literally felt like I was floating on top of the world. I was so creative and I have racing thoughts. I have high quality creativity threads to catch. I would only sleep for probably about two to three hours a day because I feel like I have so many thoughts to write down. I would stay in this state of flow for probably a couple of days and that's my creation period. But when this hypomaniac episode is over, I become slow and my creativity starts to die down. Especially when I enter this depressive episode, I I suffer from insomnia because of those negative and intrusive thoughts. I become super irritated, I become forgetful, I become slow in responding, and I engage in self-criticism all the time. So at that period, it was really hard for me to go through because I constantly question my ability to create valuable content ever again. This tip really just calms me down because I realize it's a pattern. Everything comes and everything goes. Nothing's temporary, including the creative or non-creative period. And when I start to chill out, when I start to be relaxed a little bit, I allow myself to be at a full expression of myself. And normally after that, I would find that my inspiration will gradually come back to me. Tip number two, your value does not depend on your creation and productivity. For highly sensitive people, we are already overly absorbing and responsive to social stimulus. That's why we often suffer from mental exhaustion with too much amount of input. On top of that, if we're harsh on ourselves, if we're trying to motivate ourselves by promoting productivity, we're going to suffer from burnout. Sometimes we overly identify with our own ability to create content. Maybe we suffer from low self-esteem because what if we lose the ability to create content? We would be losing our unique identity to be appreciated and to be valuable to the world. I think this is a matter worthy of some serious thinking. Have you based your entire value on your ability to create and produce? It's so dangerous of over-identifying with something because the thing might not be consistent. Like I've said, we all have states of flow, of creativity period, of non-creativity period. And it's so dangerous when we just rely on how much creativity we have. For example, nowadays people tend to over-identify with experience. Not saying this is a bad thing, but a lot of people would flaunt to the world that they have gone to the most special place, they have gone to the most foreign country, they have done this, they have gone on adventures and all that. Personally, I have gone through this phase. I used to over-identify with my traumatic experience growing up because I have experienced things that a lot of people didn't experience their whole life. So I felt like I'm, I'm the saddest, I'm the most miserable, I'm the victim. So whenever I meet people who have gone through same traumatic experience, I would get threatened and I would be super competitive, which is pretty weird because you're competing for the saddest person in the world. But at that time, I completely based my personal value, my worthiness of love and attention on the traumatic experience I had. It was really dumb, it was really dangerous. A lot of people would over-identify with their appearance. For example, beauty 
or shape. The idea of aging really scares the shit out of them, so they would spend tons of money on beauty products, on plastic surgeries, and on working out because they're so scared of losing that identity. If they lose it, they don't know who they are anymore. They don't know if they're still valuable or lovable. The most common one is fame and fortune, right? A lot of people over-identify with their ability to make money, their ability to purchase luxury houses or cars or yacht and all that because they believe if they don't have none of that, their life isn't worthy of living. Taking away all the external things, do you still view yourself as a lovable and valuable person and as a unique manifestation of yourself to the external world? If the answer is no, I wanted you to really look into the past. What caused you to have this cognitive distortion in the first place? What made you believe that you are not valuable? What made you believe that you are not good enough? Work on the roots, heal that part of yourself, and things will gradually unfold. Tip number three, you deserve to rest and take care of yourself. As creatives, we all wanted to catch as many observations in the moment as possible because they're just too precious to miss and they don't really come easy. So when we're in the zone, we literally need no food, no water, no sleep at all. I get it because that's how my hypomaniac face looks like to me. I would skip meals, I would skip sleep, I would get up in the middle of the night like 2 to 3 a.m. to write down any thoughts that I have because anyone could be a precious threat for my YouTube idea. So for the longest time, I refused to take any medications for bipolar because the thing with treating bipolar is that the doctors wanted to, like they would prefer that you stay in a low energy state, this relatively stable state instead of being too high and too hyper excited. So the common side effects of these medications includes making you sleepy, making you fatigue, because they wanted to guarantee that you don't go back to this hypomaniac or maniac state. But being stable, being able to sleep in the middle of the night means that I lose the precious time for creation. I lose the perfect time to get my creative juices flowing. I feel like I owe it to myself. I owe it to the world of high quality content. So I risked my health for a very long time. But as a result of it, I suffered from complete burnout. My depressive state got worse and it just made my life miserable. But now I actually really know how to take good care of myself. I listen to my doctor's advice. I go to sleep really early and I become relatively stable. And it turned out surprisingly well for me because when I sleep well, when I get nutrients, when I'm in a good health state, my mind become more clearer and I become more grounded for creating better content. I also wanted to mention a couple of burnout signs that you should look out for because if you have them, it means that you really need to pause and give yourself a break and nourish your mental health. For example, you get repetitive and intrusive negative thoughts. You become irritated, you become impatient. You find it hard to concentrate. You constantly forget things, you space out often. You have difficulty falling asleep or you experience sleep pattern changes. You lose motivation, you become less fulfilled and unpurposeful. I cannot stress enough the importance of your mental health. Only if you take good care of yourself, only if you put yourself in this relaxed flow state, you're able to create better content because you're allowing the full expression of yourself freely. There's no place to rush to. There's nobody that you need to prove yourself to. When you have this very precise goal or measurement that you need to achieve in some day, you actually become easily obsessive about the goals. When you're obsessive, you kind of just restrict every step of the way. You're putting on restrictions of your potential. You're restricting yourself from reaching the best self. Alright everyone, thanks for watching this video. I hope it's helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanted to see more videos like this, please subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye bye.